It is a very exciting day for the juvenile sea turtle named Zaya. After spending over four years at the Four Seasons Landa Giravaru Sea Turtle Rehabilitation Center, Zaya and three other members of the turtle family will be leaving abroad for further medical treatment. Flying turtles is the result of abundant marine debris found in our oceans, especially fishing nets, causing entanglement and more commonly named ghost nets. Negative impacts of the evolving technology and other developing advancements are causing large and irreversible damage to Mother Nature. Extensive human development around the world is degrading the water quality of the oceans and threatening marine life. Maldives, a country surrounded by water, cannot ignore this fact. Irresponsible dumping of waste in addition to poor management and monitoring of the same has left a number of marine life under the threat of extinction. The Marine Discovery Center, NDC at Four Seasons Landagi Ravaru, is a joint effort between Seamark and the resort itself to rehabilitate and rejuvenate the victims of such man-made environmental vulnerabilities. Here on the island uh, with our team of Seamark marine biologists, we are conducting several marine conservation projects, uh, such as our coral propagation project, one of the most successful of its kind, our fish lab project, which is our ornamental fish breeding. Uh, this is as well a pioneering project here in the Maldives. And we also have a turtle rehabilitation center. We opened this center uh, in 2011 and we did it because A, we were very interested in, um, in the nature and the underwater world of the Maldives and it's a great opportunity to also um, educate kids and adults from all over the world about the natural wonders of this country. So Seamark and Four Seasons teamed up in 2011 in response to depleting sea turtle numbers here in the Maldives, but then also finding a whole bunch of sea turtles that were entangled in nets and injured, and thus brought back to health before their release. And through this, we developed the Maldivian Sea Turtle Conservation Program. So we have the nest protection program in which we go out to local islands and try to teach people that having sea turtles in the wild is very important. They're an indicator species and whatever happens to them is kind of just showing the health of the ocean. So if they're healthy, the ocean's healthy. And right now we know that the ocean isn't very healthy because sea turtle populations aren't either. Another thing that we do is sometimes we take the weak hatchlings in these nests and we rear them until they're about 30 centimeters and release them back to the wild. Again, because these are the turtles that probably wouldn't have survived at all. And by taking them and raising them to a size of 30 centimeters, they're less likely to become predated upon and more likely to become adults and help out the population. Another thing that we do with our sea turtles that we rehabilitate is we put satellite tags on them. These are really high-tech tags that can track the turtles after they leave us. We want to know where these turtles are coming from because we know that they're not getting entangled in nets that come from the Maldives, but they're coming from other places. So where are these sea turtles going that they're so most likely to become entangled in these nets? And so we use this data to kind of track it, and then hopefully it will go on a broader scale working with other countries and really trying to determine conservation areas. And then the last thing that we do and that we try to get everyone involved with is the sea turtle identification project. So if anyone's out in the reef snorkeling or diving, they can snap a photo of the turtle's face and then they can submit it to us via the Maldives Turtle ID program Facebook page. Another thing that we do is we take in injured or sick sea turtles that are found throughout the Maldives here. And anyone in the Maldives can find one and give us a call and we'll take them in and help transport them around 
And this is really important because these guys are usually entangled in nets and these nets have caused severe injuries. So a lot of these turtles are missing flippers or they're just really malnourished and they need to be um, cared for very well before they can go back to the wild. Another issue that they have is buoyancy in which they float and they can no longer dive. They float at the surface, that means that they can't feed themselves and they'll most likely just starve over time. Working a turtle tongue ever fene me moodum, but a dog and toga and a tashe for nothing. The mean fender and a velata genessa micola hama, wagutum treatment there and then an injury foot, echevijiam hama, itantum, fahafa, and a mulet saf of a gener hun and a war of fejafa. Barnacles is Jaffa, and then Huriachinata, Safko, then Furtambalani Kato, Mukanyamu, and they do us for home, force feeding Kuran, the force feeding cook gang, petty, and a rehabilitated Kuran. Amuko meet Fenna Vela, the Kiwash Vela, the Mitisaki Rajak, and Anghang Amuko Fenna Vela, you know, Ginafar Mifenna, Bear Gamutako, Mifenna Bodeti, Masda Luga Jig and Anatang Mifenna. Master of Swar Bodeti da Dalugavaka me, they came and the Mitsaki Rajak Benon Krasicheno, Mvema and then Rajak Vela, me as to Vela, Nufene, Varado, injury, Vefohuta, a Kam Kahambu, Madumadu, Mihar Fene, and a plastic me Kotalo Kotalogaya and a Goni Goni, a Jehifuna, buying a chebori marvelous effort, Jehigan was. MTC has so far released a number of victimized sea turtles back into home oceans under their dedicative efforts. However, some turtles are ailing and not fit to be released back, causing a raise of concern at the center. As a result, we have been releasing more than 80 turtles so far since 2011, but unfortunately, there are still six long-term residents under our care that are suffering from the floating syndrome. The floating syndrome um, is actually some air that is trapped under the carapace of the turtle. We don't know exactly where. It can happen for different reasons and we are not able to get rid of this air right now at this stage here at our center. This is also the reason why we have to go forward with this research and that is why we have decided to give these turtles away that other persons around the world will be able to conduct and continue our research. So after contacting several uh, zoos all around the world, uh, we made contact with Paradise Zoo in Belgium and uh, AquaZoo Friesland in the Netherlands, and we started to work on the collaboration. We started working with this project 10 months ago, so it took us a lot of time to organize everything. We started working with the Marine Discovery Center here because it's a very recommended food rescue center and sorry for the animals that they are not releasable anymore so they can go back to the ocean. So that's the reason why we decide to bring them to a zoo so we can give them a better life in captivity and take good medical care and we can use them for the or plastic soup education program. The idea of this is uh, not only to give these turtles a new home, it's also uh, to continue our work here. So our research, our care for these animals uh, cannot be continued because we have lack of tools of machinery. So there we've uh, dedicated veterinarian professionals. Uh, they will be able to have extended care, uh, conduct x-rays, blood tests, and hopefully find um, something about this floating syndrome. The idea is when they will find something, they will be able to give us the information and hopefully we will be able to treat future rescue turtles here at our center and as well in the Maldives. The idea is to share this information worldwide. The floating syndrome identified in the four turtles is not yet curable at the MDC. However, with the news of overseas Paradise Zoo and Aqua Zoo Friesland adoption of Zaya and her three friends, Kerry, Peggy and La Petite, light of cure is seen at the end of the tunnel. Guys. The zoo, they have uh, more than a million of visitors per year. 
there will be extended education as well. Uh, the, these turtles that we are sending, it's all, not only for them to have a bigger home, but they will be the ambassador of their species, of the olive ridley species. These turtles will be the first flying turtles out of the Maldives. They will also be the first olive ridley turtles to be represented in Europe. So this is also very important. So important education and awareness regarding these animals and regarding marine pollution will also take place. For their journey, Zaya and her three friends are given a VIP class travel experience that also includes occasional pampering. Sea turtles being marine reptiles, Special attention is given to ensure that the four flying turtles are remain wet and warm throughout the long journey. Each turtle gets a wet pad in their customized crate. Their skin and shell gets covered with a thick layer of Vaseline at every transit and eye drops are administered to keep their eyes wet. Of course it was the first project uh, of its kind to send turtles abroad for a donation rehabilitation program. So many steps have to go forward and we were lucky enough to have the strong support from the Maldivian government uh, to help us get all the certification and permits to make this happen. Bid the warm goodbye at Landa Giravaru, Zaya, Kerry, Peggy and La Petite had their crates inspected by well-trained professionals who ensured the perfect temperatures as the transit included the first stop at Ibrahim Nazir International Airport in Dubai before the final lag to reach their new homes. All four turtles arrived in excellent condition and were swimming in their new habitats later that evening. So yeah, as you can see uh, right now, uh, the turtles arrived. They are in their final exhibit, their new home. Uh, it was of course a long trip for the animals, but as you can see now they have reached their new home. It's a nice uh, big exhibits that plenty of space, uh, many fish as well. In the tanks are a little bit more interaction. Uh, I think it's a really nice space. They will have more, uh, more space to swim around, etc. There are some parents as well, so uh, they will be definitely more happy. Uh, of course, there is going to be a lot of visitors as well uh, coming here. They will be able to see the animals, ask questions about their origin. It's going to educate the people as well. So this is also something very important uh, for us to speak about these olive ridley turtles, the first in, uh, in Europe actually. Uh, it's the first time that this has happened. Uh, olive ridley turtles shipped from the Maldives. So this is a very uh, special moment uh, for us, of course, and for the turtles. They're gonna be the ambassador of the species and, uh, and share their story uh, here in, uh, in Belgium. So they have been here since uh, one day now, they're doing good. Uh, now we're going to do some x-rays, have a look uh, what is inside their body exactly. Uh, typically they have this floating syndrome. Uh, we would like to know more about it. They have never been x-rayed so it's going to be something uh, very new as well for us and hopefully we will have some explanation uh, from the veterinarian here. So uh, we are very uh, interested uh, about uh, the outcome of the, the x-rays. It is sad that Zaya, Kerry, Peggy and La Petite will not return to the Maldives, but we know that they are safe and happy there in Paradisa and are receiving excellent medical care. What should not be ignored is that there are uncountable other victims of various species who are paying the price of irresponsible human actions. These four olive ridley turtles are somewhat the lucky ones as they were found before time ran out. As the bravest living soul, it is the duty of human race to be responsible and save the planet 
for a brighter and better future for all living creatures.